project here. Got a lot more done than I filmed. The last time I filmed was the last video that I put up, and I'm sorry. I did not film all along the way because it was dark when I was uh, under construction, and it was just hard and difficult, so I didn't do it. So this here, this is a uh, heater. Uh, it's a diesel heater heating uh, the underside of the shed here. So if you can see right here, let me just turn it off here. Let's just turn this off just for a second. All right, so the idea of the heater is to heat the underside of the shed. I put this, uh, this plastic membrane down over top of the dirt and a lot of you were saying that that was gonna turn into a swimming pool, and you're right, if I left it that way. So the idea is to wrap this plastic up over the side like this so water cannot get in. So the snow started to get on the top, and then so it's the snow would was going under there. So I wanted to dry it out before I permanently wrap up the sheets. So I could see some water down there that needs to melt or needs to dry. This is underneath and on top of the plastic. I cannot have that. So that is why I'm running the heater, hoping for this stuff to dry. If we look under here, it's pretty well dry. So you can see under there, it's pretty well dry. And that's the whole idea. So I've got the heater blasting heat under the shed. Then I've got another uh, heater duct coming in to the interior. All right, so here's the interior of the shed. It's not as big as it kind of uh, looked when it was about all the walls in. But we've got the rafters here, the tall wall, two windows, a door that I have not cut out yet. And then over here, I've got a garage door that's gonna be here. So I've got a heater blowing in here to dry out any wetness that was on the floor. And then I've got a heater that was cranked underneath to dry out underneath the floor. So what I'd like to do today is finish sheeting this section of sheet that has not been installed yet. I need to put a sheet all the way down. So that water is there because when I was testing my plumbing, I had to release all the water out that exit pipe there and we had, uh, yeah, the water just kind of went everywhere. So the idea was to have the heater blowing so it could dry all that out. And then I can enclose it. And then once it's enclosed, I can add my fan and my ventilation under there. That thing is freaking awesome. It's a flameless rig heater. I don't know how it doesn't have a flame, but it uses diesel. It's got a big old diesel engine in there and it's for um, for heating oil rigs out in Wyoming. So, so I've got a five foot overhang here. You can see that. I've got a three foot overhang on the side and a three foot overhang on the side. So like I said, I'm sorry I didn't uh, take you along for the construction of that, but I was just moving really fast. I didn't have time to sit and babysit the camera and I needed to get the roof on. So I did get the roof on and then I put the dry-in material up on the roof. So now that I got that dried out pretty good, I've got this issue to deal with. See all the snow, it's on my sheets, so I gotta clean that off and dry off those sheets. marine grade sheets they call them they're pressure treated 4x8 plywood CDX I'm gonna dry them out in here because I know I can get this building uh, or this uh, room kind of cranked up with the heat 
and they're all, all the frost will come off and then when the frost and the water hits the floor, I'm gonna use my blower and blow and dry it, so. I do need to make some modifications to this room. I've got these two windows here. As you can see, it's 14 feet tall there. We've got this man door here. You can't see the full window because those sheets are blocking the view. But the windows have gotta come up because there's gonna be a bathtub next to that window and the window's just too big. I gotta figure out something else, maybe bring the, bat, uh, the window up, remove the tub or something of that nature, and then move this one up as well, because that's where I'm gonna put a sink and I need the countertop so it's too low. So those windows have gotta go up, and then I may add another window here or some windows up above. I've got a lot of dead space on the top of these windows from the outside. I'm trying to make it look cool on the outside and then functional on the inside as well. So I am gonna grow some of my plants in here. My dahlia starts, hopefully. The windows, I'm going to order the windows and the door when I've kind of got this all figured out and once that has been set up. So where the joist is sitting on the top of the wall, I do need to put some straps there. I was gonna use these four foot or these four inch lag screws. Screw either from the top of the joist into the, the plate or from the underside of the plate into the joist. With a roof like this and a five foot overhang in the front there, you are gonna have some uplift because it's a big surface area for the, for the wind to try to catch. That wall is so freaking tall, it's so hard to get up there because my eight foot ladder, I'm on the very top of the ladder. I need all these sheets and everything out of the way so I can just move and uh, work freely so I can get up there. I was trying to do that before I sheeted the roof but didn't work out that way so these joists here these are outrigger joists right here those go out three feet and then they come in nine or ten feet so it's three foot out and six or seven foot in you want to do two-thirds in and one-third out on the cantilever and I've got these full-length joists here those run all the distance of the uh, roof and then I've got an LVL for the fascia. It's a structural LVL, a structural fascia. All right, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to get these pressure treated sheets on the shed today. I was hoping that was not gonna be the case, but they're still wet and they need some major drying out. So they're kind of uh, frost soaked and water soaked. I don't wanna put them on there with frost and then cover them up. I don't think that's a very good idea. I'm gonna let this heater run for probably another two or three, four hours until they're completely dried out. Get this whole room completely dried out because of all the frost and the water that's getting on the floor. And then I will likely put them on tomorrow. That should give me enough time as well to run the heater down underneath so that can completely dry out. I wanna run that for a day or two. So it completely dries, and then I put the sheets on, and then I'm gonna wrap the plastic up one and final, one, once and for all, and go for it that way. So this sheet here had the most water on it and the most snow and ice. That one is pretty well almost dry, but I've got the heater blowing right on it. So once I get that one completely dry, then I will move it and try to rearrange these other sheets fashion that will help them all dry together. All right, so this is the back side of the shed. Same thing here. Got my um, plastic wrapped up. This side, I am, I don't know about the pressure treated sheets on this side or not because I was in a hurry and put the sheets on there and wrapped it over. So here's the roof here. You can see the synthetic felt blowing up from the heater that's inside that blower. It's a 412 roof, I've got the dry-in on, this is dry-in material only. This is one row of ice and water shield. I need to do at least one more row of ice and water shield. I, I ran out, so I just put one on, and then I put a row of the Feltex. So when I get some more ice and water shield, and when there's no snow or ice on the roof, I will likely take off this layer of the Feltex, this synthetic felt, and replace it with the true ice and water shield. So, so you can see where the frost is up there, and where the frost is kind of on the side, over the, over
over the top there and then down. That's where the overhang is. Um, and the reason it's frosty there is because all the heat that I've been driving from the inside has melted all of this. But it's not melting on the overhang. So you can see that big overhang over there. It's a five foot overhang, which is awesome. It's gonna be nice for keeping out weather. The night that I put this Feltex on and this, this uh, roofing underlayment, I got done with this at midnight. So I was rushing, rushing, rushing to get all the sheets on, the plywood OSB. So I pushed, 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 and I wanted to get the roofing underlayment on the same day so I didn't end up with a bunch of ice and having to walk on an icy roof. Didn't want to do that. So with this, I'm going to put another layer of ice and water. I will tear up this one and slip the ice and water underneath there like it's supposed to be. And then come spring or whenever the weather is good, I'll put the roofing shingles on. I'm likely going to do a 50 year gaff shingle. It's called the Grand Sequoia. It's a beautiful looking shingle. Do I need 50 year shingles on a shed? No, but they're so freaking cool looking. So that's what I'm kind of aiming for with this scenario here. So I'm just gonna let this dry out for a few hours, leave that in there. I don't think I'm gonna get to that today, which is unfortunate. I really wanted to get to it today, but it's not gonna happen. I'm really happy with the progress of the shed. I'm sorry that I didn't show you everything along the way, but it was just too much and it was dark. And I was trying to work in the dark because that's when I get off work and it's dark. And so I would work, work, work with lights and stuff. And then I just didn't have any time or the energy to film it. So sorry about that but here's where it is at this point in time like I said this is a five foot overhang three foot on the side and then three feet in the back so that's gonna do it for this video I appreciate you guys you guys are awesome thanks for subscribing to my channel if you're not subscribed please hit the subscribe button anyways thanks for watching and we will see you guys in the next video